International Trade Focus is brought to you by Ghana Free Zones Authority and supported by Goyle and Agricultural Development Bank. Coming up on International Trade Focus. We take a look at how the Ghanaian economy is faring in the wake of COVID-19. And later, stakeholders react to the president's call to boost local manufacturing and reduce the over-dependence on importation. Hello, thanks for tuning in to another edition of International Trade Figures. My name is Anna Spio. Now, to say that the COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus disease, has had an adverse impact on the world is an understatement here in Ghana. Even before we started recording cases, it was no doubt that the ripple effects of the coronavirus had already taken a huge toll on the country's economy. Now, on today's edition, as we've been doing in our subsequent editions, we'll be taking a look at the economic impact of the coronavirus on Ghana. We can't proceed without saying special thanks to the sponsors of this program. International Trade Focus is brought to you by Ghana Free Zones Authority. This is sharing good fortunes and supported by Goal, Good Energy, ADB, Truly, Agric, and more. International Trade because it's also supported by Pediasset Valley Resort. Stay tuned. Your business concepts and investment must be harnessed through a hassle-free and highly thoughtful process to make them globally competitive. That is precisely the mission of the Ghana Free Zones Authority. Ghana Free Zones Authority packages Ghana's enabling business and investment environment with endless benefits. Total exemption from major taxes and levies for first 10 years. Talk to us now about our business oasis created all over the country. Acres of industrial enclaves for all sectors. Our beneficiaries are in vibrant business exporting finished and processed factory inputs all over the world. And what do our clients call us? Partner. 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 Ghana Free Zones Authority. Sharing good fortunes. Breathtaking picturesque views, the essence of tranquility recrafted. What you desire, a romantic expedition, syndicate sessions, banquet and conferences, or a discreet weekend getaway. Just name it. It's exclusively packaged for you at Pediasi Valley Resort. Every spacious rooms, ultra modern gym facilities, games, indoors, terrace, and lawn restaurants and lounges, cozy private dining, and all the swimmers' paradise. Aquaba, any day, all year round, to Pediasi Valley Resort. The acts of serenity, skillfully served. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Are you an importer or exporter? Do you need quick financing at the best rate on the market? ADB has good news for you. Walk into any agricultural development bank location nationwide for that solution to all your trade financing needs. ADB offers you pre-financing of exports and imports, post-shipment credit facilities, bank guarantees, the issuance and acceptance of letters of credit, documentary bills for collection, outward documentary collection. Enjoy free advisory services from our well-trained, dedicated trade officers. Exporters of agricultural products are encouraged to take advantage of this great service. For further inquiries, call us on 0302-210-210. ADB, making trade finance easy. ADB, truly a Greek and more. You're watching International Trade Figures. Our full call point segment comes up next.
COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus disease that just over a few weeks ago was seen as a Chinese crisis, has moved from just an issue for China to a global pandemic. With over 160 countries affected by COVID-19, world leaders have shifted their focus to the containment of the disease, leaving the management of financial and economic sectors struggling for their own survival. And the effect has been detrimental. Perhaps what has made the outbreak of the coronavirus so devastating on economic activities in the world is the fact that it has drastically reduced the free movement of people, goods and services that are important ingredients for business sustainability. The coronavirus has had an adverse effect on various sectors of the world economy, pharmaceuticals, air, sea and ground transportation, oil and gas, automotive, manufacturing, international trade, Hospitality industries have been hit hard by economic disruption from the outbreak. According to a report from the UN's International Civil Aviation Organization, global airline revenues are expected to fall by 4 to $5 billion in the first quarter of 2020 due to flight cancellations. According to the International Energy Agency, IEA, global oil demand has been hit hard by the coronavirus and the widespread shutdown of China's economy. Demand is now expected to fall by 435,000 barrels year on year in the first quarter of 2020, the first quarterly contraction in more than 10 years. In Ghana, economists say if the coronavirus is not contained quickly, prices of goods can increase as there will be great demand but very little supply, a situation they say can create a ripple effect on the country's economy. Hospitality, travel and tours are among industries that have been worst hit by the impact of COVID-19. Several importers, retailers, manufacturers in Ghana say interest on their loans are accruing and the future seems bleak for their businesses. In the wake of COVID-19, the president of Ghana, Nando Danko Kufado, has reiterated the need for Ghana to look within. He said the time has come for Ghana to boost local manufacturing and limit the over-dependence on importation of goods. The president encouraged local manufacturers to take up the challenge to build and increase their capacity and produce more to meet the increasing demand. We should be making most of the things that we use in Ghana ourselves. And I'm seeing what is happening to us. It has very big consequences, but it is also an opportunity. They say necessity is the mother of invention. I called you here for all of us to put our brains and minds and hearts together to see a way forward for the future of our country. Whatever decisions are made today are not going to transform the situation today or even tomorrow. But then we are then going to be putting in the building blocks, the platform for the transformation of tomorrow. And I felt that there's a whole range of things that come into play when a crisis of this nature occurs. And the simplest and obvious things, gloves, sanitizers, pads, this, that, you can think of a whole range of things. It would make a great deal of, for a great deal of interest to see in the whole range of things that are involved, how many of those things are made in Ghana and in what quantities that they are made. We can't continue like that. We can't continue if we want to be a properly functioning country. We can't continue to live of other people's ingenuity and hard work. We have to live off our own ingenuity and creativity and hard work. That's the only way we can build a viable nation. So I'm saying to you, and it's, uh, it's, it's something that I will be saying a lot during this crisis, that it provides us with an opportunity. 
A warm welcome back. You're still watching International Trade Figures. Now, in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, the president of Ghana, Nanado Danko Kufuado, has reiterated the need to decrease the overdependence on imports. He said this when he met the heads of the pharmaceutical and banking industry at the Ghibli House. Now, to this effect, we spoke with the CEO of the Association of Ghana Industries, Mr. Seth Chum Akwabwa, and an economist at the Data bank research mr courage mate up next is the conversation that we had with mr seth chum akwabwa the ceo of the association of ghana industries on the president's call to reduce importation Well, thank you very much. And uh, I think definitely the president call is a good call. Uh, it's indeed a welcoming news. And I commend His Excellency the President for uh, coming out with such a bold uh, uh, decision. Um, it's a good call because for a country, you must not be overly dependent on another country for your own survival, especially when it comes to the essential commodities. It's a call that AGI itself has been making all these years. A lot of our advocacy are geared towards promoting the use of made in Ghana products and even more importantly, enhancing the capacity of local companies to produce for the Ghanaian market. We don't mind, I mean, in the international world, we are in the global world. It's not every product that you can produce. Nobody does that. But significant amount of products you use in your country should be produced by your own people. And, and especially when it comes to the basic necessities of life, food, clothing, shelter, you need to have adequate capacity to produce it to feed your people. Because if you don't, if any country shuts its door to you, there's a global crisis, you're in trouble. Then you cannot survive. It's about survival. And therefore, the president call is in the right direction, and we fully support it. And it's indeed something that we have been preaching and talking about all the time. And therefore, we all have to rally behind this call and make sure that it happens for now and then for the future. Well, to be honest, uh, it was unexpected and indeed it has affected the whole world, the whole of Africa, and then Ghana, we are also having our own challenges with it. Um, and it, the, the effect comes in different forms. For those who are importing finished products to feed the Ghanaian market, very soon they are going to have challenges if it doesn't come to, we don't have a normal situation very soon. Because people imported for Christmas, so there seems to be enough stock of things in the market. There's still some products that we are producing in the country, so they are, they are actually uh, supplying these products to the market, which is making things normal. But bear in mind that even for the products we are producing in the country, we also highly depend on the raw materials that are imported from abroad. And therefore, if the situation doesn't come to normalcy, not only will you be having challenges with your finished product that you are importing, you also have problems with your raw material that you need to produce, uh, the other finished products that you are able to produce in the country. So we see this as uh, an international and national uh, challenge. And therefore, we must work hard and fast to find a solution to it. Uh, for businesses, in situations like this, we are even also the worst affected. Because, of course, we have people who are working with us. If the pandemic spreads and people are getting the infection, uh, it's reducing labor productivity, it's reducing volumes of products we can produce. It's even reducing consumption in a way, except certain essential products. So it has serious ramifications. Uh, today is affecting all kinds of things, including oil prices and all that. So it has a very devastating effect on the global economy. Bear in mind that if you take China, for example, China contributes about 1.7, about 17% of the world's GDP. So if China is closing shop, you can imagine its impact on the whole world. And that is exactly what is happening now. It is like the world's manufacturer of goods. Most of the goods that are in Europe, America, and the radio, most of them are produced in China. So it's a big challenge if China is, is shutting its doors to other people. You know, even the Ghanaian producers, when you are buying a raw material, sometimes they want to inspect, physically inspect the products. Even though you can actually order these products 
through the internet and all that. Sometimes they want to inspect to be sure that you get the right quality that you, you've asked for. That fiscal inspection is going to be very difficult now because you can't travel. There are travel bans all over. Airlines are not going to be operating and all. So it's really an international and, and national crisis. And for us as, as, as an association, uh, we appreciate the urgency that we are attaching to it as a country and, and, and the efforts we are making to reduce the spread. It is so critical. If we don't do it, it's, go, it's going to be even more challenging the, in the days and the weeks and the months ahead. So we welcome the call to make sure that we all put our hands on deck and prevent the spread so that things will be brought to normalcy very soon. Very good. You know, um, when you have crisis, you deal with the crisis situation. And then you have normal times, you plan. And, and, and project ahead and see what you can do under the circumstance as well. At this particular moment, we have crisis. So it is difficult to plan and plan well. So I will talk about how we deal with the immediate crisis and then going forward how we should handle things. Immediately, there are certain products that are essential for our, our for, for, to even uh, reduce the spread, the potential spread. Those products like hand sanitizers and some of the product, the, the alcohol to spray or not, they are very essential products now. Unfortunately, as we all know in the market today, we are running short of it in the system because people are panicking. They are buying volumes that they don't need. So some may buy and hot and therefore others are not getting it. it. It's a serious problem. So we need to resolve that. And one way to resolve it is to pull the manufacturers together. And that's exactly what AJ has just done this morning. Uh, we've had uh, indication our president, the president of AG has been invited by His Excellency the President's office. Today they are going to have an interaction to see how the situation can bring its, people, its members together to ensure that the volumes that is needed are produced and supplied. And supplied. So we've just had a meeting of our members in the cosmetic industry who are largely the producers of these hand sanitizers. And we are working around the clock to make mm -hmm. sure that we help them with the raw materials that they need uh, most of them have good capacity, installed capacity that can do volumes for the country if you put it all together. So we are coordinating this effort and making sure that uh, we, we resolve that particular issue. So that is one way to go about it, where you pull resources together and then have a bit of support from government uh, to be able to make sure it happens. So for example, beyond the uh, available products, some may have some of the raw materials in-house at the moment. But if they don't get subsequent supplies, we're going to run short soon. So then we rally our people together, certain volumes that are needed. We see how we can even immediately import, we may even uh, for, the, for now import a few of these products just to make sure that the market is flooded with the products you need. And then you plan towards the actual production of some of these essential products. So in the case of the corona, one of the essential products, as I said, is the hand sanitizer, and then the spray you can do around, and you need the alcohol. Ethanol to produce, to, to, to produce uh, a process to produce some of these products. So eventually, we should be able to have uh, uh, plants that are producing the ethanol here. And, and, and we don't need to wait too long. And we already have companies that have some capacity of producing some of this, but a, on a smaller scale. So, what we need to do immediately is to inject certain uh, 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 capital into it and make sure that we upscale the operations and that they can produce enough to supply the other manufacturers of the finished products. So that is one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is that there are other products apart from hand sanitizers that are also relevant in combating the spread of this disease. We need to, we are working on a list of all these products and ensure that we are able to produce some of these products locally. Beyond this, there are other essentials like the food related products. Ghana today even though our staple foods come from here, but we still import a lot. We still import the rices, we import juice, several other products. So the essential products in, uh, that uh, of consumption, immediate consumption, we need to find which companies have food capacity. What will it take for them to increase their capacity so that we actually uh, have enough supplies in the system in case this situation prolongs? But in the long term, and that's where the question or the core of the president comes in. In the long term, we should be able to have a situation where a lot of the products we consume in this country 
we, we consume this, are produced locally. If you do that, able to do that, then you are not highly dependent on foreign countries, so that if they close uh, their, 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 their borders, their countries, then you can still have your people surviving. And I think that is critical. Now, in the long term, it's about market forces, it's about competitiveness. We know that even though we all see these products that we are talking about as very important, essentials and all that, governments may not say that because they are essentials, uh, even if you are not efficient, just produce, sell it at any price and everybody will buy. It will not work. What we need to do is to improve our business environment, resolve some of the critical issues that affect manufacturing. When it comes to electricity, let's have the best efficient electricity supply as much as possible. And efficiency means cost also being reasonable. When you have the cost of electricity being reasonable, if you look at the AGI Business Barometer, which is a quarterly survey we do to assess the challenges that our manufacturers and business are facing, the cost of electricity is always coming up. So we need to look at it as a major factor of production. We also need to look at other factors of production, such as the, even the financial arrangement. What kind of funding are available for local manufacturers? You need to have a funding mechanism that enables you to borrow medium to long term so that you can expand your factories. We are talking one day straight to one factory so that people can set up factories even in the villages. If you have factories in the villages that were producing hand sanitizers, we wouldn't have this situation because now the challenge we have is that even if you produce in volumes, how do you ensure that it trickles down? It goes down all the way to the various parts of the country so that everybody has access and then we protect ourselves. So you need to have some of the factories in in, in various parts of the country as well. But for you to do that, you need to have a funding mechanism that is able to do this. So access to medium to long-term capital at relatively and competitively priced levels. Here I'm talking of the interest rate. If the interest rate is too high, even if the funds are available, people will not borrow because they can't turn it around and make the necessary profit. Then you talk about other factors as raw materials. We need to develop the raw material chain a little bit. Some of the raw materials can be produced in the country. You know, in situations like we just talk about the fact that we need the ethanol to come in and all that. If we had arrangement to produce them in large volumes, we wouldn't be having problems. Today, India has stopped supplying a lot of the pharmaceutical products to other countries because they are taking care of themselves. So if you're highly dependent on them, if they haven't take, finished taking care of them, would they supply to you? And therefore, we need to look at the products that we can develop the raw material base to supply, to produce and supply, and develop it. There are various agricultural products that we are doing now. We need to strengthen our supply in agricultural related products. So we need to do the commercial farming, which is more reliable and, 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 and consistent so that we have uh, supply in a very uh, reliable manner. If you do all this, then we are helping to produce the raw materials to feed industry. So we need to look at the entire chain of industrial development, and there's a lot we can do. Our population is big enough to absorb certain capacities of industries. We need to do that. Government has to be working with AGI, the industries, so that uh, we, we, we build the capacity of some of our members and, and upscale their operations and take advantage of situations like this. To a large extent, they do. We do have manufacturers, some of which are even multinationals, and their standards are as good as everywhere in the world. We have local uh, companies that are owned by Ghanaians who have come up with quality products that are also of international standards. If you take the example of the cables we're producing, all the three cable producing companies we have have ISO certification. It means that their products can be exported to anywhere in the world and it will stand the test of time. In fact, for, for, for cables, for example, those that are being imported into the country are rather of, of poor quality. And Ghana Standards Board has confirmed this several times through the tests that they've done over the years. So it means that we have local manufacturers who have knowledge, who have expertise, who can turn out some of these products. The challenge is their capacity, doing the volumes we need, and then getting the financing to, to increase and improve their capacities. Now, these things do not happen overnight. Production is highly dependent on demand. It's demand and supply situation. If there's no demand for your product, you will not produce just to stock. Nobody will do that. And therefore, 
for you to be increasing your capacity to do the large volumes, we must have the demand side also ironed out. The demand side has to do with the market competition, but also fair competition. If you have products coming from other countries that are competing with you unfairly, because we're a developing country, you have a lot of rigidities in your system. You have limitations to capital assets, you have limitations to cost of energy and supply and the quality of energy, you have limitations to raw material base. Then you have a challenge producing at a price that can compete with those that are coming. So we need to iron that out. But once we're able to deal with the business environment issue, we should have and we do have adequate expertise and capacity, as you're asking, to produce these products. We need to sort it out, and I'm sure Ghana can do it, and Ghanaians can do it. Well, um, in the short run, as we say in economics, some factors could be variable, but most factors are not variable in the short run. And therefore, in the very short run, a few factors of production can be changed or improved or expanded to accommodate larger volumes. So for example, if it mean asking your, your, your workforce to run shifts, you know, three times, you can do that. If it mean uh, if raw material is there and, and increasing the volumes you produce and packaging it, you probably can do that. But in the short run, you cannot suddenly set up new plants. You cannot increase the production capacity in terms of actual output that you generate from your, 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 your. You can't suddenly put up new factories within this short period for certain products. It will take a while. So when you're talking of time frame, we have to actually separate it. You have to look at them, what you can do immediately, okay? Within the next week, this week, next week, and the next two weeks to about a month, to flood the market with essential products. Those ones, you cannot overly increase the capacity. But then we can augment it. We can, if it's raw material that is lacking, we can put together and make sure that we get the raw materials and, and, and uh, we get the raw materials. And when we get the raw materials. If it's raw materials that is lacking. Okay, so if it is raw materials that is lacking, we must quickly make available the needed raw materials so that we can produce the volumes. And we, we can ask our members to increase output by way of running shifts and all that. Let's also be sure that electricity supply, for example, is consistent and reliable during this period, so that that is not used as an excuse for, for not producing the volumes we need. Okay, and then uh, transportation system to distribute the goods we produce. For example, as we were just discussing the hand sanitizers, our people were saying that even if we produce the volumes and we don't iron out the distribution system, it goes to a few shops, they take it, and then they are not spreading it becomes a challenge. So we need to iron out this. And these ones, within the next week or two, we should be able to do it. The second stage in terms of the timeline is to look at products that, if we don't even have the raw materials locally, we can bring them in bulk. If it is ethanol, for example, we can you know, import quite a volume that can last us for at least a month or so between now and, and, and at the time, so that we continue to increase the volumes and then in the next three months, we can then look at what is it that we need to do to actually expand the capacity. So that becomes a medium to long-term plans, you know, and that one could take more than three months, six months and all that. And in the very long run, then we strategize on an industrialization agenda. Uh, there's a policy around it that the Ministry of Trade has been championing. We need to make sure that all the, the, the factors of production are, are, are supportive, you know, if it is financial sector. I know there's been a lot of reforms in the financial sector. We ensure that loans are obtained for medium to long term activities and at a rate that is possible to actually uh, 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 borrow. So, and then as I said, the raw material base, we need to look at do backward integration. We need to produce farm setting products in a commercial manner that can supply to uh, our, our local producers for uh, agriculture and all that. So those are the long-term things. There's a lot we can do at that level as well. So uh, if you're asking of timelines, as I said, I will divide into these three. The immediate uh, 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 lines, the immediate term, what we can do, medium, and then the long-term. Well, my last words is that we are in a crisis situation, and therefore, in crisis situation, business cannot be as usual. 
uh, for our members. And, and, and we invited them just yesterday, late afternoon, and this morning they've, they've all been here to discuss with us. So we call you emergency, you come, and then we discuss and we strategize. So for our members, we are asking that be on the alert, uh, organize yourself, products that are of essential to, to uh, relevant to the situation, try and produce them in large volumes. It's also the time that we work together and collaborate. For example, if you are importing a particular uh, 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 raw material and your volumes are small, you are probably not getting it in fast because your volumes are small. The, wherever you are getting it from, they are not seeing you as a, as a major importer, so they never produce yours. We can come together, do it in vol big volumes, and then we resolve it. But more importantly, we are looking into the future. So work with us, work with the association. The association is working with government so that we strategize to produce most of these products in-house. That is very, very important. So let's look at the crisis situation. And in every misfortune, you see a bit of blessing in there. The blessing in here, of course, we are not calling for because of the blessing, but it has, it has happened. And that is the call that the Excellency, the President has made, that we, it's about time we look inwards. It's about time we think Kenyan. And this one goes to every consumer. Because as I said, there's no demand for your product. You're not produced to supply the market. So the demand is driven by ordinary consumers like me and you and everybody else. When we go to the market, let's buy made in Ghana products. Once we buy it, then the suppliers will have the encouragement and then the financial capacity to produce and supply. So then in a situation like this, you see, when we wait till we have crisis and everything has to happen overnight, it's difficult. It's almost difficult because that's in, the, in the short run, you cannot just expand your, fa your factory capacity to produce even if the demand is there. But if we gradually develop the habit of consuming local made products, then we are encouraging them to expand gradually and fill the market. So in a situation like this, our capacity would have already been big enough and there would be no need calling uh, for emergencies. So that is what I, I would say. And I encourage everybody. But of course, above all this, because we are dealing with a crisis, let me add my voice. To, to the advice that has been given by the Ghana Health Service and all that, that we actually respect the code protocols that government is giving out, avoid large meetings, hand washing, basic health you know, and hygiene uh, 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 standards have to be kept, and then let's all respect it so that we avoid the spread, and I'm sure we'll come out of it. Thank you. You're still watching International Trade Figures. We're taking a word from our sponsors. We'll be back shortly. Your business concepts and investment must be harnessed through a hassle-free and highly thoughtful process to make them globally competitive. That is precisely the mission of the Ghana Free Zones Authority. Ghana Free Zones Authority packages Ghana's enabling business and investment environment with endless benefits. Total exemption from major taxes and levies for first 10 years. Talk to us now about our business oasis created all over the country, acres of industrial enclaves for all sectors. Our beneficiaries are in vibrant business, exporting finished and processed factory inputs all over the world. And what do our clients call us? Partner. 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 Ghana Free Zones Authority. Sharing good fortunes. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Gold Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead with expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. A warm welcome back. You're still watching International Trade Figures. This is the second part of our in-depth segment. Now, Mr. Courage Mate is an economist at the Data Bank Research. He has called on governments to boost the agricultural sector in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Well, this general sentiment is, um, is really bearish 
to say the, the, the least. I mean, at best, it is bearish, right? Because um, a lot of uncertainty in the air, um, not just uncertainty surrounding health care, but uncertainty surrounding investment, returns on investment, uncertainty surrounding the robustness of global demand, uncertainty surrounding travel and tour, events, organization, uncertainty surrounding supply chain. And so it appears the global economy is in a phase of contraction because um, capital flow is being restricted, investment decisions are being curtailed, and safe haven decisions are rather being encouraged. And once safe haven decisions are encouraged, a lot of capital moves into safe haven assets in order to preserve their value, you don't have efficient allocation of resources across the global economy, and that restricts growth. It restricts global welfare. And so the economic situation right now is quite um, bearish. And uh, um, at the moment, we, we, we are re I think the expectation is to get some positive trigger from the health experts, and then you see sentiment starting to recover on the back of the fiscal and monetary stimulus that has been um, implemented. Yeah, the key areas we are seeing in terms of safe haven demand is mainly in the form of demand for gold and uh, demand for um, um, USDs, US dollars, demand for the Japanese yen, these are the global safe haven. And then also fixed income securities, which um, tend to be more like a hedge against volatility on the stock market because in the fixed income market, you have yields adjusting very quickly to reflect um, um, changing risks dynamics. And so investors would, in the worst case scenarios, move into fixed income securities to hedge against changing yields. So we've had a lot of increase in demand for gold, for instance, as a safe haven. The problem is that even with gold, there are two kinds of demand you can have for gold. Safe haven demand, where the investors see elevated risk, and so they buy a lot more of gold to keep the value of their assets. Right, so that's, that's going to help the price of gold. And for gold exporters like Ghana, they may benefit when the price of gold go up on the back of safe haven demand. But there's also another side of demand for gold, which is physical demand for gold, where economies that manufacture things requiring gold as input, metallic substances as requiring gold as input, will have to slow down their demand because the global economy is not robust anymore and that restricts physical demand for gold. So the net effect on gold price will now be dependent on the interplay of an increase in safe haven demand versus a decrease in physical demand for gold. And again, that means that there is uncertainty in the price outlook for gold exporters, apart from other commodities as well. Well, in the case of Ghana, it is more of a confluence of factors, right? It is not that pretty straightforward for Ghana because um, um, we have domestic investors, we have non-resident investors. Now, non-resident investors, when they come into our market, they would pay critical att attention to the FX outlook because they are exposed to exchange rate or FX. FX risks. And so if they fear uh, 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 an, an increase in the risk of depreciation, they will start to make moves that would increase the risk to your investment. Now we have a lot of foreign investor presence on our fixed income market. Admittedly, it's declined since 2018 when invested, the emerging market sell-offs began. But it's still quite elevated. I mean, about 25% of our domestic debt Treasury debt is held by foreign investors. And so when they fear currency pressures coming from the back of the fact that the downturn in oil price and commodity prices would mean um, limited FX inflows for us, and so that means our external position will be weakened, and so the return on their investment will be hurt. They want to move quickly, move out quickly. And so they sell our bonds, more like dumping the bonds at 
giveaway prizes and that causes the yields to go up on our market now if you are an investor a local investor who already has that bond in your portfolio the reduction in price for that bond or those set of assets you find a reduction in the value of your portfolio right because if you if you sell a bond cheap if I revalue my portfolio, I have to revalue at the new lower price. And so the valuation of my bond portfolio will go down. And so that's a loss for even a res resident investor. And so basically, it's not entirely a pleasant story. The other thing is that when, risk, when yields go up like that, the Treasury, in an attempt to raise money from the domestic market, will have to pay investors the new level of yields on the market. In order to raise substantial amount of money to fund the budget. So when yields go up, even though it is good for new investors coming into the market at that point, it is really bad for, for instance, the treasury or the issuer when they want to issue new securities because they have to pay the new market rate of a high interest rate or yield. So it is kind of a problem from a financial market perspective because what we say is that financial market has been tightened or there's a squeeze in the financial market and so capital is no longer cheap and once capital is no longer cheap investment for business expansion is also restrained it might also lead to an increase in cost of living because if you don't expand invest to expand supply of goods might reduce and that would mean an increase in price pressures you know beyond the financial market Ghana also could face significant negative risks from the fact that um, commodity price collapse as we've seen oil price declining significantly to a level which is about half negative deviation from the 2020 budget expectation. What it means is that government would face drastic revenue shortfalls coming from petroleum revenue. But that is not all. The government is also likely to see a shortfall in customs collections, right? Because we do a lot of imports as well as exports. Now, this international trade translates into excise duties or customs collections for the Treasury to run its operations. But because of the restriction on travels and imports or global trade, there will be a reduction in customs collections, and that's a shock to government budget as well. Then you also look at the fact that when trade in the domestic economy is constrained, VAT collection is also reduced. So government VAT collection could also be negatively affected. And generally, government revenue could suffer some shock from that perspective. Then general economic activity like tourism, travel bans will restrict tourism earnings. And tourism contributes about fourth largest to our foreign exchange earnings, right? So when there is a restriction on travels, tourism activities are constrained. Then there is also a risk to our FX earning potentials and as well as economic activity. Recall last year when we did the year of return, the substantial inflows we got from not just the travels but the financial activities or economic activities that came with it. And that helped the economy in the fourth quarter especially. And this is a loss that we would have to take or a hit that we have to take as a result of all of this COVID-19 effect on the domestic economy. Well, I, at the moment, it is, I would say it's too early because, um, first of all, we only have from the Bank of Ghana's recent Monetary Policy Committee information, we only have at most two months of data, right? And as at the two months of data points we had, it hadn't become um, that um, of a serious issue, particularly for the local economy. Right, and so I, for that, just that two months, I wouldn't say there's sufficient basis. However, another point of note is that this thing is still in an evolutionary phase, so and the, the effects are changing rapidly. And so, it, it, it will be very difficult to put a handle on specifically how much we are likely to, to lose. But when you do your back of the envelope calculation, at least from a fiscal perspective, we are likely to get a hit of about 0.5% revenue shortfall, equivalent to 0.5% of GDP. And that is a gap that the Treasury would have to fund, right? Either by looking at the Ghana Stabilization Fund, combine that with 
uh, rapid credit support from the IMF World Bank on concessional terms, as well as domestic bond issuances to close the gaps. But from a general economic perspective, the growth in potential growth in GDP at the moment is still conservative. From the Bank of Ghana's estimates, if nothing is done at all, GDP growth may likely slow to 5% year on year in real terms. And in a worst case scenario, we could have GDP growth slowing to 2.5%. You know? So these are significant, but pro uh, provisional, but significant measures that uh, estimates that shows that the COVID-19 um, impact is really, really serious, even though it's still provisional. So the natural instinct is to descend or retreat into safe haven mode if I am an investor or a potential investor. Even in Ghana now. Even in Ghana now. And I'll give you an example. So before all this COVID-19 noise, we had investors, even domestic investors, being a little bit quite um, um, confident about the outlook. And, and so people were looking to take decisions for the long haul. Now, a lot of people are really going short in their investment decision. So if you do, say, uh, business operations, rather than invest in permanent working capital, they are investing in just day-to-day -day current um, 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 uh, transactions just to get business going with day-to-day -day working capital, not permanent working capital like expansion and, and increase in additional um, and storage and so on and so forth. Then if you come to portfolio investment also, normally you will have people or fund managers looking as far as five years maturing bonds, seven years term to maturities. Now we have a lot of them preferring to buy between one year to three year maturities. Nobody will really want to look into the distant future because they want to play it safe, right? And also the fact is that because of all of this risk, a corporate issuer is also going to struggle to get capital because if I have to invest, I have to invest in a safe or safer asset. And most, if not all, investors consider the treasury as safer or risk-free than a corporate issuer. And so that's also going to starve the corporate issuer funds because almost everyone is in a safe haven mode at the moment. Well, I think um, we need to start um, as an advice from why we are here, right? We are here because of a health concern, right? We are in this kind of economic situation because of a health concern. So the solution should start with correcting the health problems and whilst at the same time trying to look at um, economic solutions. So my advice will begin from solving a, the health problem, which is adhering to all the health standards and practices that have been chained out by the WHO, by our governments, by our policymakers, our um, health service and health experts, washing your hands frequently and then sneezing in tissues once and changing them frequently and also keeping a respectable social distance for going some of our normal practices like handshakes and hugs, just to ensure that we can till the spread of this epidemic or pandemic. Once we are able to get a handle on the spread, then we are about halfway there because once people are healthy, then economic activity can start to bounce back. And once we get to the economic solutions, of course, we've had the central bank trying to inject some liquidity into the system from the recent monetary policy decisions where they slashed the monetary policy rate amidst, um, uh, amongst other measures. The next phase is to have the central government also backing this monetary push with some fiscal push, right? So you, businesses who would have to pay certain taxes ordinarily might be, be enjoying or might have to enjoy some tax reliefs. But then I, we also understand that granting tax relief cannot happen overnight. You need parliamentary approval to do some of these tax reliefs. So in the interior, maybe government might also want to front load some expenditure, you know, in anticipation of this um, legislative approvals, IMF World Bank support. Because once government spends, it goes directly into aggregate demand. Unlike 
monetary policy measures that will work through the interest rate transmission mechanism. But with the case of government expenditure, it has to work straight into the aggregate demand function and it works almost instantaneously. So here, the call will be for fiscal policy, central government to take a lead role in ensuring that aggregate demand remains robust. Once aggregate demand remains robust, people demand a lot of things. We'll have innovative ways of providing from the domestic economy. And I think it is also very important that we target certain things like staples, right? Because, I mean, the basic necessities of man includes food, first of all. Once we can produce our staples that we need from our day-to-day -day survival, then that is taken care of. And the other ones will be what we need to rely on from the external world. But the external um, supply is a bit shaky now. So I think government spending should also tackle, say, agric sector productivity with the production of our staples like rice, maize, millet, and all those cassava and all those things that we, we need for our daily consumption. And then it will trickle down to other sectors of the economy. But you need fiscal push to lead the way in addition to the monetary stimulus that we have. Amongst all of these, individuals should also be responsible for their health uh, care as well. Yeah, so first of all, tourism, right? Tourism is one important sector of the economy that um, we note that it contributes the fourth largest to our foreign exchange earning. And once there is travel restriction, people don't travel in and out, conferences are not held across the country, hotel bookings are restricted, um, there is going to be a contraction in international tourism and domestic tourism because social distancing measures are also being put in place and so people can no longer gather again and so that reduces the, the contribution from, tourism, from the tourism sector. Then you also look at transportation as another sector. Transport is about the third largest within the services sector of Ghana's economy and so once you restrict travel, restri uh, travel you impose travel bans, flights not coming in from, from outside that is also another hit to the transport sector. Then you also have a situation where the oil markets collapse, I mean the crash in oil price, would mean that there's a reduction in foreign exchange and the oil sector um, contribution to total GDP. Crude oil provides about 29% to our foreign exchange earning, which is the second largest contributor to our foreign exchange earning. And so if the oil sector takes this heat, it is also going to hit hard on not just government budget, but also on real GDP. And so we also need to look at the multiplier effects because all of these sectors have finance and insurance activities as well, with banks not comfortable enough to lend financial sector play will also be restricted and so the financial sector could also take a little bit of a hit so and this have a connection to the entire economy so there will be multiplier effect beyond all these sectors that i've just highlighted well um so you have a situation where for instance uh, people don't no longer import for sale. Traders no longer import for sale because I, I left out trade and commerce. That is uh, the biggest within the services sector. It contributes about 26% to the services sector. Now, once traders no longer bring in goods and they exhaust their inventory, we start experiencing situations where they start to reprice higher and higher that reduces disposable income because prices will go up and so your real income will go down and so ordinary consumers will start to suffer shock to their standard of living you know and that is a critical situation for consumption and well-being so if we are not able to get government to support domestic production within a short space of time the supply of goods could be affected and so prices could go up real income is likely to go down. From a health perspective also, if we don't continue to practice hygienic and safe standards, and we allow this to blow out of proportion, looking at the weaknesses within our health sector and health infrastructure, we expose ourselves to this COVID-19 spread rapidly, but even more dangerously 
are those who have underlying health conditions, right? Because they are the ones most at risk. Their immune systems are low. And so if we don't practice safe hygienic standards, we do not only expose ourselves, we expose our loved ones, we expose those with underlying health situations like respiratory uh, issues and, and what have you, and the elderly as well. And so the, 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 the implications cut across health and economics for even the ordinary individual and consumer. There's more after this break. Don't go away. Your business concepts and investment must be harnessed through a hassle-free and highly thoughtful process to make them globally competitive. That is precisely the mission of the Ghana Free Zones Authority. Ghana Free Zones Authority packages Ghana's enabling business and investment environment with endless benefits. Total exemption from major taxes and levies for first 10 years. Talk to us now about our business oasis created all over the country, acres of industrial enclaves for all sectors. Our beneficiaries are in vibrant business exporting finished and processed factory inputs all over the world. And what do our clients call us? Partner. 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 Ghana Free Zones Authority. Sharing good fortunes. Breathtaking picturesque views. The essence of tranquility recrafted. What you desire. A romantic expedition, syndicate sessions, banquet and conferences, or a desperate weekend getaway. Just name it. It's exclusively packaged for you at Pediasi Valley Resort. A brief, spacious rooms, ultra modern gym facilities, games, indoors, terrace, and lawn restaurants and lounges, cozy private dining, and all the swimmers' paradise. Aquaba, any day, all year round, to Pediasi Valley Resort. The acts of serenity skillfully served. President of Ghana, Nanadu Dankwa Kufadu, has ordered the closure of Ghana's international borders to human traffic. This is to control the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. The directive, however, will not apply to goods, supplies and cargo coming into the country. The measure, which took effect on Sunday 22nd March, involves the closure of land, sea and air borders while subjecting incomers to compulsory testing and quarantine. Ghana has so far recorded 24 cases with one death. The head of the Ghana Standards Authority, GSA, Professor Alexander Dodu, says the GSA is ready to work, protect and promote all institutions to ensure that there is a significant reduction in the importation of products that the country can produce. This follows the president's call to boost local production and reduce the over-dependence on importation of goods into the Guinean markets. Because we import everything, any disruption to supplies from overseas leaves us completely exposed and dangerously so. As we speak, countries like India and China have restricted the export of certain key pharmaceutical products. So paracetamol will definitely be in short supply over the next few months, antibiotics and the like. His Excellency the President is absolutely right. We need to look within. So what would the Ghana Standards Authority do? As a nation's standards body, keeping standards for the country, we are aware that protection of Ghanaians and promotion of businesses is our job. We need, as Ghana Standards Authority, to work with all industries to make sure that they will meet the quality requirements so that they trade with the world. We are hoping, and we have made that case strongly, that we should offer the needed protection for Ghanaian companies. Let us stop importing things that we can make here. Let us ensure that if things are going to be imported, they will at least meet the same standards as the Ghana Standards Authority standards and that the tax waivers given to them will not make Ghanaian goods so expensive that they are unattractive. Touching on the production capacity of local manufacturers, Professor Dodu said local manufacturers have the capacity to produce more. He added that the local manufacturers, however, will need an enabling business environment from government to thrive in their operations. We believe and we know for a fact that we have companies who can produce the majority of our needs, not all of our needs. Every country trades with other countries, but we believe we have the capacity 
to produce at least three times, four times, even 10 times what we are currently producing in several different areas. Now is the time to restrict the import from rice to poultry, that's chicken and it's like. Maize, we have a, a situation there, but there's so much we can do within. And our call as Ghana Standards Authority is for Ghanaian industry to realize this, that as we support them to produce for Ghana, they create jobs. So the issue of unemployment, it can be wiped off in less than 12 months. If we eat Ghana, drink Ghana, wear Ghana, and become Ghana focused. And unfortunately, all countries around the world are looking after their nationals. Ghana tended to look externally. And because we were also relying on money from imports, we were sort of in a little bit of a confused situation. On one hand, you want to promote local production. On the other hand, you are reliant on imports in terms of the taxes from imports. We have to go through the difficult period of saying that imports are over. That's history. What can be produced here from fruit juices to drinks to water to chicken to rice, let us focus on made in Ghana. Let the standards we have in Ghana be so strong that foreign imports cannot come in unless they meet our high standards. In the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, he cautioned producers of hand sanitizers to adhere to the standards of the Ghana Standards Authority and the Food and Drugs Authority. He also cautioned buyers to ensure that the hand sanitizers they purchase have been certified by the FDA and the GSC. You know, in the outbreak, in the desire to do good, a few things have gone on. I am aware of one group in the pharmaceutical sector putting out a press release giving people the formula to produce their own sanitizers. I do not think that is right. There is a reason why we, had a, we have a food and drugs authority. The reason being that they ensure that whether it's household chemicals, whether it's food, whether it's medicines, it meets a certain requirement because you cannot rely on the goodwill of people. Human beings can cheat even in the pandemic. So if the product is not registered by the Food and Drugs Authority, please buy it with extreme suspicion because you don't know where it's coming from and the nation Ghana has not endorsed it. Thankfully, thankfully, the Food and Drugs Authority has stated publicly that anybody bringing in sanitizers or anything to do with the pandemic will get accelerated approval, usually within 72 hours or where it's possible within 24 hours. So the barrier to delay has been removed and the Food and Drugs Authority has opened its doors. So people selling things which have not been approved is wrong. It's opened the doors for charlatans, for thieves, for crooks, for people who can tend to evil, to practice evil. And using the wrong formula can give you a false sense of security. So if you are using what is said to be a sanitizer, which is not a sanitizer, then you are using nothing. So instead of using soap and water, which is indeed the best sanitizer, you are using a fake sanitizer, which is no sanitizer, exposing yourself to disease and skin problems that these unapproved products can actually cause. So please, in the haste to do good, be careful not to do harm. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, international trade focus visited the Food and Drugs Authority to find out the role they are playing in the fight to contain the coronavirus disease. Mrs. Maria Abba Lovelace Johnson is the Chief Regulatory Officer, Head, Food Enforcement Department. She said that although it has not been established that the coronavirus disease can be transmitted through food, the FDA will continue its public education, especially to food vendors, and treating them to adhere to all the precautionary measures. The um, coronavirus is not transmitted through food. Actually, as it is now, we don't have any evidence showing that it can be transmitted through food. So we are fine. But then the food handlers are being educated. We have the street food vendors and all of them. And we've been educating them. We've intensified our public education. And we've asked them to adhere to all the directives that have been given not clustering in a place to give enough social distancing and also if they, they happen to sneeze they have to sneeze in the tissue and drop it in the bin if they have to cough they have to do that in a tissue and drop it in a bin and then right after coughing they have to sanitize their hands or wash their hands with soap and under running water. If they have to um, sneeze as well, they do the same. Washing hands, 
with soap and under running water. Mrs. Lovelace Abba Johnson said the government, in collaboration with pharmaceutical companies and the FDA, are working hand in hand to solve the issue of shortage of high quality hand sanitizers on our market and to help reduce the price hikes in hand sanitizers. She further cautioned all hand sanitizer producers to ensure that they adhere to the rules of the FDA to prevent worsening the spread of the virus. The president on Monday called the Pharmaceutical Manufacturers Association of Ghana, that's the leadership of the association, and invited the Food and Drugs Authority chief executive as well. So they were there in a meeting, and at the meeting, what the president wanted to was for them to address the shortages in the in town. So these manufacturers were encouraged to do more of these sanitizers and also the food and drugs authority was asked to ensure that we fast track the processing of the applications of these sanitizers so more sanitizers are being brought in and it's such that yeah, it's on the fast track so they come in and we do we stop everything we're doing and we ensure that we look at the safety of that sanitizer the efficacy of it and its quality and if it is okay we say yes this is approved by the FDA. So out there, you go and you sell fat products. And we say this is safe, this is efficacious, and this is of good quality. You know, you mentioned somebody say putting some and it was um, peeling the person's hands and all of that. That's why we check for the safety of the product. Is that something that after putting on your hands or not act gently on your hands? Is it going to even cause you to have bruises in your hands and all that? If it is, then you are even worse off because then the, um, the virus is not just going to lie on the surface of your hands or on your palms, but is going to have direct access into your skin and so by so doing you are even worse off so you have to ensure that whatever you are applying is registered by the food and drugs authority here are some basic protective measures against covid 19 popularly known as the coronavirus disease Are you an importer or exporter? Do you need quick financing at the best rate on the market? ADB has good news for you. Walk into any agricultural development bank location nationwide for that solution to all your trade financing needs. ADB offers you pre-financing of exports and imports, post-shipment credit facilities, bank guarantees, the issuance and acceptance of letters of credit, documentary bills for collection, outward documentary collection. Enjoy free advisory services from our well-trained, dedicated trade officers. Exporters of agricultural products are encouraged to take advantage of this great service. For further inquiries, call us on 0302-210-210. ADB, making trade finance easy. ADB, truly a Greek and more. And it's a wrap for this week's edition of International Trade Figures. But before we leave, we'd like to say special thanks to the sponsors of this program. International Trade Figures is brought to you by Ghana Free Zones Authority. They say sharing good fortunes and supported by Go Good Energy, ADB, Truly, Agric and More. International Trade Figures is also supported by Pediasi Valley Resort. My name is Anna Spio. We'll be back same time next week with some more on international trade related activities here in Ghana and beyond. Remember to stay safe.